A journey of thousand miles begins with a single step. And that step was first taken in 1971 when the founder late Mr. Chandrakant M. Modi started his first trading company, Ketan and Company, for scientific instruments and laboratory equipment. But before I go down memory lane, let me thank you for being here and watching this video. Hello, I am Ashish Modi, CSO, Chief Success Officer and Medical Inventor at Shivani Scientific, where we enable and support IVF centers and clinic to impart successful assisted reproductive treatment by providing turnkey projects, innovative equipment, services, and timely end-to-end -end solutions. 2021 marks the golden jubilee year of Shivani. Yes, 50 years of leadership and innovation marked by setting up of 1000 plus IVF centers in India and across the globe in 30 plus countries. Let me take you down memory lane and joining us would be a few dear friends and well-wishers who like you have been integral part of this beautiful journey. When I started the IVF program way back in 1985, we used to prepare our own culture medium. You very wisely and aptly decided to import the ready-made culture media for IVF. Now this was a great success because it solved a lot of our problems. Now this initial success led to Shivani Scientific in venturing into more and more of IVF products and supply all the equipments required for IVF laboratory including setting up I started the IVF journey in Nigeria in 2007 and Shivani has played a very big role in the success of our unit. Our first equipment and the training and all that went into it, I don't know what we could have done to have achieved over 2,000 IVF babies over the years. years experience in laboratory technology and yeah, for now already active in AOT since 1994 so almost 30 years of service to the IVF community. What Shivani to evolve over the years from a local player uh, in the Indian market to a company that is now uh, active globally. I still remember 2003 
When I first came to your Dahisar plant, saw your innovation. At that time, you used to make spermifuge, you used to make heating blocks, which nobody made in the country. You don't only support us, you are a part of us. That you want to make a difference, and you really want to serve through us the infertile couple. That the only thing which matters is fertility champions, and you are a part of the whole team across the country. This journey of co-creating IVF success has been possible because of your support and confidence. So a heartfelt thank you from myself and entire team at Shivani Scientific. And here is a commitment to innovation, quality products, and great service, so that we can continue co-creating IVF success with you for years to come. So after the introductory company video, we start rolling our session today. A warm and hearty welcome to all of you from India and overseas. Welcome to an, another episode which is a part of the ongoing series, Innovations and Improvisation in Embryology. This program, hosted by Shivani Scientific, is an extended part of their 50-year celebration program. Today's topic is indeed related to embryology, but it deals with an allied parameter, which I'll meet is as important in precision and dexterity for the elevation of ART results. Yes, we today will be touching upon gadgetry, innovative gadgetry, mainly the close working chambers. And today we are lucky to have with us as co-hosts, none other than India's largest IVF chain, the Indira IVF, and the team headed by Mr. Nitish Muradia. We also have expert opinions from overseas embryologists of repute who too will be sharing their experience, followed by a nice in-house demonstration of how the procedures are conducted in the closed chamber, much to the awareness of those who have not been till date updated regarding it. So initially, Mr. Muradia will be sharing his personal experience with this innovative gadget, which has been an integral part of all his labs spanned throughout India. His experience, his personal opinions, and his appreciation much to the satisfaction of you all, will be presented by him. So before I start, let me give a brief introduction of Mr. Nitish. He's, of course, the CEO and the co-founder of Indira IVF chain, which has to its credit 101 plus centers. He is in charge, marketing, director, co-founder, had his master's degree from IIT Kharagpur, received BC Roy present President Gold Medal Award, and today is at the epitome of the IVF industry in India. So, sir, I welcome you to this webinar. The floor is yours, Mr. Nitish Muradia. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kesri, for such a uh, uh, generous introduction. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate the entire Shivani team for completing uh, 50 years. Uh, it is indeed a great achievement and I feel, uh, you know, Indian IVF system uh, has evolved because of uh, companies like you. Uh, I would like to welcome again all my esteemed panelists, uh, Dr. Prabhakar, Dr. Alpesh and Nawal. Uh, and all the viewers who are listening to this uh, presentation, uh, a warm uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, as uh, Dr. Kesri uh, uh, suggested, uh, I would like to just uh, set the context of uh, this uh, whole uh, webinar session uh, that uh, 
what we are trying to see is uh, how can close working chambers be useful in what we do in the lab. Uh, so as we all understand and as we all know that, you know, the goal of the embryologist is to maintain a culture environment that preserves the development of potential gametes and embryos that come under their care. And the environmental factor consists of culture media that the gametes and embryos grow in, uh, the gas environment, the disposable plastic ware used during the culture, the mineral oil, the lab quality, and the course, the incubators that are home for the duration of in vitro culture. Among these, you know, air quality is something that uh, you know I will try to stress more. Uh, in this, uh, you know, going forward. And, you know, the aim of embryologists is to optimize the combination of these factors so that in vitro environment is somehow replicated to in vivo environment, which allows the embryo to develop unimpeded by external stresses. And during hand handling of these oocytes and embryos, you know, they must be protected from extrinsic sources, which are physical and chemical stresses. And such factors can be grouped into three major areas. First is the temperature changes. Second is the cultural uh, osmolarity and pH changes. And third, and the more, one of the more important thing is the air quality. And although, you know, they do interact in various ways, the simplest way to consider this factor is that any compensation that an oocyte or embryo has to make comes at the energy cost and hence uh, must be considered as stress since the cell's physiological energy budget is dedicated to its normal development. Now, there have been uh, Cairo consensus on the IVF laboratory environment and air quality. Uh, there was a meeting which was held in 2018. So I would just like to, uh, you know, uh, enlighten or highlight a few aspects uh, from that. The entire uh, IVF lab process is governed by the biological biology of the gametes and embryos uh, to optimize their growth and development. The biochemical and biophysical requirements govern all IVF laboratory procedures. And that is why the design of the IVF lab, uh, the HVAC system, the engineering of the laboratory equipment and the material use becomes important. And the best approach would be to protect the gametes and the embryos against the exposure to the adverse external factors. Although the embryos are highly adaptable to the environment to which they are exposed, but any adaptation would represent the source of physiological stress. And cellular stress can also result in alteration in embryonic gene expression, uh, regulation, or both including imprinting and epigenetic effect, which could be inherited. And the consensus, uh, which was uh, agreed uh, on 50 consensus point, but you know, just a precise summary is that you know, all the participants agreed that, you know, uh, that fair evidence derived from both animal and human studies indicate that the controlling laboratory contamination positively impacts in vitro fertilization outcomes. On the basis of this reviewed material, it is recognized that level one evidence is mostly lacking but it is also agreed that such evidence is hard to obtain owing to the physical complication related to randomizing different atmosphere in the same laboratory space or incubator. It is unanimously agreed that the great effort should be taken to ensure that ART laboratory has clean air. Uh, just a conflict of interest, uh, we at Indra IVF has been using these chambers from the day one. Uh, we have never worked outside these chambers and we right now have more than 100 chambers. Um, so I think uh, uh, we feel that, uh, you know, the whole world is inclined towards one thing that the temperature, the pH, the osmolarity 
uh, and the clean air environment is necessary for the development of growth of a good quality embryo. Hence, uh, whatever science or technology we can use to protect and preserve the external stresses which are caused during the whole course of action should be avoided. Uh, the best place for an embryo to grow is inside or in vivo. And in the lab, we are just trying to mimic the in vivo condition. Hence, we can or we try to be as close as possible to the in vivo condition. And we do understand that before the oocyte goes into the incubator for culture, there are various manipulation and steps which the oocyte has to go through uh, from oocyte scanning to denudation uh, to loading of the IVF or the ICSI dishes and then going into the incubator. And then the process of evaluation for centers who don't have the time lapse, uh, the PN check, the FERD check, the cleavage check, the blastosis check, followed by transfer of freezing. So there is a the, the oocyte or the embryo or the blastosis spends quite a lot of time outside the incubator, which can uh, which can vary from 30 seconds to maybe two minute, three minute, which does alter the conditions of the culture environment that it is kept in. Hence, in some way, it causes stress on the embryologist to do this process quickly which can hamper his overall outcome as well as the overall outcome of the entire process. So to make him and his working conditions slightly relaxed and optimal, these chambers play a crucial role uh, in providing kind of incubator type environment. I wouldn't say it's a replica of an incubator, but I would say it's a incubator type environment outside the incubator to minimize the stress of the external factors which are caused on the oocytes and the embryos during the time when the handling of these gametes is done by an embryologist in the lab. So I think we have a, a, a good uh, panel with us and I would like to uh, open the floor for them and, and hear from them. Uh, and it, it, it is a very interesting topic which uh, you, Shivani has picked up and uh, there is a lot to learn from it. Thank you very much. So, so before I let you go, I would just like to ask you one question. Uh, how is your level of satisfaction from one to 10 with this incubator? 10 is in favor. So where will you put the level of satisfaction at? See, uh, you know, I, I, as a lab director, you know, it is, uh, there are probably close to 100 embryologists working now uh, in Indra IVF. And it somehow gives me that comfort level that, you know, I can't monitor each and every embryologist. And each and every embryologist have their own speed of handling any particular task. There may be embryologists who would do a ICSI procedure or who would do a denudation in some amount of time and there will be other embryologists there will be people who are who have completed the training and gone to the lab which would normally they, these people would take slightly higher time compared to the people who would you know who are more experienced and you know these chambers give me particularly a bit of comfort that even if there is more time that embryologist tries to uh, spend doing a particular procedure in the lab there is a certain, um, you know, protection. I wouldn't say 100%, but there is a certain level of protection that these chambers provide uh, to keep the environment close to the incubator when the handling is happening outside. Um, and uh, these chambers are, uh, I would say, there is no maintenance uh, that these chambers require. Just some cleaning. You come to the lab, put it on, let the temperature stabilize. And you run the system. That's it. Fine, sir. Fine. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate your appreciation for this gadget. So before we go across to next speaker, Dr. Alpesh Doshi, I would like to interrupt it. And I would like to just put in a small clipping 
let's know the gadget. And for us to know the gadget, we have with us Mr. Renes Jacob, the service head of Shivani, who would be introducing the gadgets to you. Hi, this is Jacob. Today I'll be introducing to our two instruments, namely Lapsel S and Lapsel I. So let's get started. Lapsel S and Lapsel I are designed keeping in mind the end user comfort as the core of our design principle. Its design combines the characteristics of a workstation with an incubator like environment, making it ideal for gamut handling or manipulation. Lapsel closed chamber delivers unraveled ergonomics to improve the quality of your time in the lab. This is Lapsel I chamber. The chamber is designed to house inverted microscope manipulator used for XC procedure. The chamber accepts most conventional inverted microscope with manipulators the chamber is designed to incorporate hardware like laser for assisted hatching, MC, polarizer and motorized torrent to name some of them. All the instruments and dishes in the chamber are maintained at an optimum temperature, humidity and CO2. The recirculated humidified warm gas combined with air heat system assures that the stable temperature in the entire chamber or in the entire work area. Chamber air purity is provided by circulated filter airflow passing through large HEPA filters and activated carbon filters. All the micro manipulator procedure technique requires maximum stability of specimen in the dishes or anywhere on the microscope stage. To provide the stability, Lapsel I is supplied with low profile anti vibration table. Accessibility to the instrument within the chamber is provided by no less than two hinged access door in the optimum positions at the front, as well as two sliding iris port provided hand entry to the semi sealed environment during the manipulation technique. A heated water reservoir enables chamber humidity to be at 70% RH. As the entire equipment is located internally, the gametes are not affected by the drafts from the air conditioning ducts or unstable air environment typically found in laminar air flows or biological safety cabinets, thereby reducing stress on the gametes. The closed environment is virtually uninfluenced by ambient lab conditions that are often subjected to toxic VOC fumes. The parameters of temperature, CO2 gas concentration and humidity can be set by digitally controlled with continual display of temperature and CO2. Lapsel I chamber are devoid of any heated metal or glass work surfaces. All surface tubes and dishes within the chamber are warmed and this helps the culture dish maintain its ideal working temperature anywhere in the chamber. Chambers are provided with sample port for external validation of CO2 and temperature. Its clean, spacious, full flat working surface of 1075 mm in length is one piece heated stainless steel. The Lapsel I is made up of fully stainless steel of SS304 grade. So to conclude upon, this is nothing more than a lab within the lab because it houses every parameters and controlled environment required for the gamete manipulations. So that was for CHI. Now we go across to CHS the closed chamber studio zone. Why is the environment of prime importance 
in an embryo laboratory. Why is it that we have to take care of multiple avenues right from the air quality to the incident light to the existing VOCs to the existing epigenetic factors the reason is simple because we are handling gametes and to make the matters worst we are handling them out from vivo into vitro conditions they are small microscopic cells they can be easily affected by any sort of a stress handling stress environmental stress maintenance stress pH stress osmolarity stress and once the stress factor exceeds its barrier it will prevent them from progressing further means its viability will literally crash out so there are many cases where we get cases of fort failure retarded arrestment poor progression severe fragmentation slow phase etc etc and it becomes very difficult for us two times where to put our fingers to whom to pinpoint to what can be the problem the basic idea is whenever we are doing embryo culture we have to provide it an ambient stress free environment now till date there were all procedures which like scanning denuding inseminating injecting embryo loading embryo grading oocyte grading which was a bit done on a good quality laminar airflow where the air quality was taken care of but still they were subjected to outside environmental conditions there was no closeness in it there was no compactness in it to minimize the stress so this chamber this lab cell s because it is incorporating right now a stereosome now this whole stereosome is incorporated into this closed acrylic chamber which is mimicking a compact incubator so this is showing you all the essentialities which one has to adhere to for optimal embryogenesis and to minimize trauma to the maximum so i'll explain this to you it is a nice sturdy acrylic chamber which is connected with a perfect precision oriented incubation system 37 degrees lovely channeling or the free flowing carbon dioxide which in its spatial mode covers the entire volume of the enclosed chamber if needed there is a chamber of humidity in which humidity chamber in which we can put the water of humidity so ambient humidity is maintained plus during the procedures a nice adjustable test tube holder in which your follicle aspirates can be placed and gently locked in for the convenience of the embryologist we have nice hand ports which can be accommodative for the functioning manipulation of the stereosome and the very nice and a salient feature is there is an outside regulation of the light so this jargon is also kept outside what it does is initially it may provide a little bit of inconvenience factor for an embryologist to work because we have been habituated to an open culture system working open environment where their freedom is more but here it is restricted just to the two hand insets so your work pattern becomes a little restricted your hand movements become a little restricted but everything is facilitated in such a nice way like i want to take the stripper handle i can take it from here i want to take the pipette i can negotiate it from here and also the fear of you dropping a dish is also minimized because these are two side balance planets plates which are kept over here 
in the event of doing a detailed procedure like embryo loading, we can open this complete chamber, expose it down and then you can do the negotiation or loading, shifting of the dish, again manipulating the light adjustments, switching it back, added advantage being small, being compact, the area being less, the recovery also will be very fast. Now this microscope window is modulated in such a way that once the microscope is adjusted, it is airlocked. It's completely airtight, non-permeable to outside air, air entry inside. Then the control panel is smooth, flip buttons and to adjust the height, we have got the adjustable table key. Now if I press it down, it goes down, up the other way, it goes up. So the embryologist at any time doesn't feel inconvenient to work. Yes, the mindset which was there in open working system will definitely take its toll because anybody, it will take time for him to adjust or to modulate himself to the new working condition. Many have questioned the efficacy. Well, we cannot pinpoint accurately, but one can be sure that instead of exposing a plate outside of an incubator on a laminar flow in the environment of air of the laboratory which is cool at 26 to 27 degrees, will that induce more stress or will the environment in this closed chamber in a compact area with proper gassing, temperature conditions and proper sterility will facilitate the requirements of the embryo man. Of course, it will not be prudent enough for me to say that instantly your success rates will be zooming up. It will gradually take time because embryology is never time related. It will take you a number of samples to work with, to justify with and the more the good the quality of the samples to working under ideal condition, then and then only you will see an elevation in your success rates. That's the logic or that's the rationale behind Shivani inventing this closed chamber. Well, so now we have been acclimatized or I could say introduced to the machines. This is what they are. This is how their functionality is. And this is how they have an added advantage or so-called added advantage over our conventional open system. Still, much to the liking of the embryologist or to the adjustment of the embryologist, it will take its own time before everyone takes it within their forehood. Now we have amidst us and another satisfied embryologist from overseas who also is ready to share his views and opinions. And he is none other than Dr. Alpesh Doshi from UK. I welcome you, sir. I'll introduce you. Acknowledged Human Embryology Fertilization Authority. He has a wealth of experience. Diplomat member of Royal College of Pathologists numerous publications and books to his credit, extensive knowledge about the most innovative field subsequently in ART, that is the PGD and the PGS, executive committee, member of Alpha Scientist in Reproductive Medicine. And he has involved himself in many an endeavor, in many a project, in judgment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so before I stop reading the extra extras for you. I think I would like you to be on the floor. Lovely to share the screen with you. It's over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Can you, thank you, Dr. Kersi. Can you see my screen or not? Yes, sir. perfect, perfect. IVF London Care and lovely little baby and the uh, mom too. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely a pleasure to talk to all of you and uh, congratulations to the uh, organizers uh, to get such a great um, forum together, especially discussing the nitty gritty of embryology and specifically how to optimize success rates in, a, in the IVF lab. As we all know, there's a lot of focus that is now changing towards um, embryology. And of course, these, uh, I, I always uh, use the analogy that the embryology lab is the heartbeat of any IVF unit. And today I'm gonna to be sharing my experience at, um, at using the closed chamber um, just trying to, yeah, there we are. Okay, at using the closed working chamber or what we call the lab cell. Uh, and I've, I've used this for many, many years, almost 23 years now I've used the closed working chamber. Um, you know, initially we uh, used the Australian version uh, and, and now we're using the Shivani version, which is the lab cell. So just wanted to kind of make you aware that this is something that we have been using for many years with a lot of success. And most importantly, I wanna be talking a bit about the physiology of everything that is involved in embryology, which is so related to everything or every component that is present within this working chamber. So moving on, we know that the rationale behind working in a closed controlled environmental chamber is for gamete and embryo handling. It is in theory stress-free because one of the main components of maintaining viability in eggs and embryos is temperature, pH and humidity, of course. So what do you use the chamber for? Typically you can use it for everything. It's literally lab in a box. So potentially you can use it for screening of all sites and egg collection. You can use it for insemination, your conventional IVF. You can use it to um, strip the oocytes, break C, monitor the embryo division, and of course also select the embryos for transfer. I know in Australia many years ago when I actually went to see how they use these chambers, they actually even use it for embryo transfer itself, which is to load the catheter and hand it over to the clinician. So one of the myths in uh, IVF, in, certainly in, in clinics that are considering using a closed environmental chamber is that does it compromise working uh, in a laboratory? Does it slow you down? Does it stress the embryologist? And the answer is a very flagrant no. That in fact, it, the closed working chamber, in my opinion, puts the embryologist at a bit more comfort level that they're not under a ticking time pressure of having to perform a procedure within a certain time frame. We all know that there's some things that we continuously get harped upon, which is be quick, be fast, because eggs are sensitive, embryos are sensitive, you wanna put them back into the incubator. So it creates almost a dilemma to um, many lab directors who have embryologists that they wanna train. And of course, training takes time, junior embryologists, do take a bit longer than the more competent or senior embryologists. So this is a perfect tool in order to minimize the stress on the gametes and embryos. And at the same time, letting your staff take the time that is needed to evaluate the eggs and embryos in a lot more comfortable and um, comfortable situation. So of course, you know, if your embryologist has a bit more time, they're likely to make the right decisions. For example, choosing the embryos for transfer. I appreciate that many clinics nowadays have time-lapse systems, so the pressure of having the embryos out is not there. However, in many clinics whereby time-lapse is not a reality yet, or it's, it's unaffordable, then certainly having the IVF chamber or what we call the controlled environmental chamber is a lot more advantage because you can spend a bit more time looking at the embryo, rolling the embryo around, um, without really worrying that it's really compromising um, the integrity of the embryos, such as temperature and pH stresses. So as I said earlier, what do we use typically the IVF chamber for? We, can, we in our setting, use it for egg collection, um, denuding the eggs for ICSI. Even, you know, if, if you have your, um, if you have a chamber on top of your micro manipulator, you can even perform the ICSI in it and of course, now this is a reality. You can have a chamber on top of your 
micromanipulator. And essentially, you can use it for everything that you do in an IVF lab. So let's look at some of the advantages of a open versus closed system. So we know that the open system, which is conventionally your laminar air cabinet or your LAF as they call it, one of the biggest drawbacks is that you may get the great A air that potentially we all talk about that, oh my God, we, you, you have to have great A air, this, that, and the other. However, what are the compromises that essentially we're making in order to kind of get this air quality? And one of the biggest compromise we're making is temperature. We all know, and through the research that I'm gonna show you a bit later on, temperature is very, very crucial, especially at the oocyte level, because the temperature drops can actually destabilize the meiotic spindle in the oocyte, which can induce non-disjunction in the oocyte at the meiotic spindle level, and it can relate or it, it can lead to chromosomal abnormalities in the resulting embryo. Now, without adding, you know, without putting, I couldn't put more emphasis on the fact that this is all an iatrogenic trauma that we are creating on the eggs. Because if we can maintain that temperature, we can certainly maintain the integrity of those oocytes. Now, we also know that oocytes from younger women have got a much better repair system when it comes to their spindle or ester filaments. However, with oocytes of older women, they lack the mitochondrial uh, functions within the oocytes. And of course, these oocytes are very, very sensitive to any kind of trauma induced by temperature. So temperature is a major factor that is essentially maintained by the IVF chamber. I go to the point of saying, and um, forgive my bias on this, but as I said, I've been doing this for a very, very long time and typically use the IVF chamber for a very long time in my career. One of the things I have always said is that I go into labs from a troubleshooting perspective. And I often use the analogy that some labs try and run before they can walk. And what I mean by that is that I go into labs and I get asked, can we buy the most flashiest technology such as time lapse or such as automated vitrification systems? And yet I feel that the most basic things are lacking or some of their basic um, optimization strategies may be lacking. For example, I call, I, I, I use the IVF chamber as one of those very important pieces of equipment in a laboratory to at least get you to a very decent success rate. And then you can use the bells and whistles in your lab, such as time lapse. So in my opinion, the chamber is a very important piece of equipment to maintain the viability of eggs and embryos to take you to the next level of trying to optimize your success rates. We also know that apart from temperature, carbon dioxide is very important because pH is also very easily lost outside of, um, or, or you know, outside of the incubator. And of course, uh, humidity and osmotic stresses are also a factor. <clears throat> so what are your advantages with using the IVF chamber? Typically you can, as I said, use more time to look at the eggs and embryos in a lot more detail. You can grade your oocytes um, with, with a lot more confidence. You can grade your embryos. And of course you can use it for many procedures such as the ICSI, zygote scoring and fertilization check, blastocyst assessment by rolling the embryo out. And of course, you know, if you have this on top of your micromanipulator, you can perform all the micromanipulation procedures within a controlled environment. So what are salient features? We know that nowadays the chamber uh, can also utilize the CO2 control mechanism. So you can have carbon dioxide being blown into your chamber, maintaining the pH side of things. Yes, one of the biggest advantage of the chamber is having a uniformity of temperature within the closed working environment. Um, there is a fan in there, which has got HEPA, uh, you've got HEPA and activated carbon filters as well. So the air is being recirculated, it's being cleaned. And of course it's passing through filters 
uh, to give a, a more optimum and clean air even within the uh, vicinity of handling the samples. And of course, because there's activated carbon filters in there, uh, one, can, um, one can safely feel that the air is being VOC filtered as well. We all know the impact of VOCs in a lab. And certainly if you are, if your lab is in a very kind of um, uh, city-like environment, you know, if you're in the middle or in the heart of town, then you potentially have a lot more VOCs hanging around in your lab. So again, uh, having an environment which has got any kind of activated carbon filtration is always an advantage. And uh, moving on to the um, other you know, features, of course, we all know, and, and I keep on repeating myself, but we have CO2 um, moni you know, monitoring and of course CO2 uh, assessment as well. There's a VOC filter as well. There's of course um, very precise kind of functionality improvements in the Shivani chamber, such as the test tube holders. It's really been thought through. And I remember many years ago when, when Mr. Modi had come to London, I had shown him the chamber that we were using. And you know they have very nicely built a new generation chamber, which has taken into consideration some of the very uh, practical points that we would like to see in, in a closed working chamber. So from my perspective, the chamber that is now available, such as the lab cell, is really optimized. You know, it, it, it can, um, you know, it, it can be altered in terms of height as well. It's got electronic raising and lifting. So I'm really um, happy with the chamber that I have because it's got more added features, which I use in my day-to-day -day embryology. Now, of course, one of the biggest apprehensions that embryologists have is, is it going to be too confined in terms of space? Is it really going to compromise my hand movements? Is it going to make it more accident prone? Because you know what, I can't move my hands around and I might bang my hand onto, onto one of the perspex chambers. Um, am I going to drop a dish because of the confined space? Um, is it really going to give me the same field of view when it comes to under the microscope? In theory, all your reservations and apprehensions are very, very logical. Because when you are working in a closed, restrictive, confined environment, these are all very natural uh, concerns to have. However, I can tell you that to an experienced embryologist, it probably takes an hour or two to get used to the whole uh, confined environment. And yet within a couple of hours, you feel that, yes, I think I can get used to it. So like anything, a bit of practice, and of course, a bit of getting used to uh, working in, in, in a closed environment. And of course, it's not that small or it's not that confined. You still have enough room to be manipulating your dishes, to bring your dishes in the vicinity, having multiple dishes, you know, of not multiple patients, but certainly of the same patient around within a working area. So from my perspective, a lot of these apprehensions can be elevated. They are purely just a concern. And in the practicality of things, these um, issues are not even an issue. So, Again, one of the common myths is that, oh, I use a, um, an oil overlay, overlay system in my culture. So my temperature is being maintained, my pH is being maintained, and there, and there seems to be a uh, no worry situation that, oh, if I'm under oil, that means I'm fine. I don't need the IVF chamber. And the answer is that's not true. Even working under oil has its limitations you are only protected or your gametes and embryos are only protected for a set time period. And that's literally minutes. You know, we're talking about a three minute time period by which your temperature and pH can be maintained. And after that, typically you start losing the temperature, you start losing the pH. Even if you feel that you're maintaining the temperature by working on a heated stage, trust me, the pH is definitely being lost. So, it's not a carte blanche that if you're working on an open system and you're working under oil, you are fully maintained in terms of those critical parameters. You, you, you can do those measurements within your own lab setting 
and you will find the answers that the temperature and pH does go down. So again, as I said, the misconceptions are a misconception. CO2 does affect pH. By working in an open system, you are going to be losing pH literally within minutes. By working on an open system, you are potentially subjecting your eggs and embryos to more temperature fluctuations because you can have air pockets within a laminar airflow cabinet. You can have hot spots and cold spots in the same area that you're working in a laminar flow cabinet, purely based on where the, um, where the fans are situated. So all these things make a huge impact on what we call the stability of temperature when it comes to your eggs and embryos. So here I have, I have a video and I'm, I apologize that it's very dark. Uh, but I want to just play this video on what we see and how we work for egg collections um, when using the chamber. So here's the chamber. We are screening some follicular fluid under a microscope and just identifying the eggs. We collect the eggs in small equilibrated tubes, which have got the culture media. We identify the eggs and put the eggs into the culture media and the eggs are ready to go into the main laboratory. All right. So this is typically how we use one of these chambers for. So again, you know, using some science behind it, there have been so many publications that have stated the importance of temperature when it comes to all sites. And again, a beautiful study, this has been presented in almost 2001, almost 20 years ago, that has shown that the spindle dynamics are very sensitive to temperature. So you can see that temperature fluctuations can depolymerize the meiotic spindle in the human oocyte, which again, if left for too long, can be a non-reversible phenomenon. So your spindle to a certain extent will take the bantering of temperature trauma. However, if subjected over a certain amount of time, will not be able to repair itself and will lead to further complications such as um, uh, meiotic abnormalities or chromosomal non-disjunction and aneuploidies resulting in your embryo. And again, to add to that, many authors have subsequently, since the early 1990s, have shown you that the microtubules, the spindle, the aster filaments are all very temperature dependent. And it is paramount that these basic physiological needs are maintained in any IVF laboratory. So in the olden days, when we did not have chambers around our micromanipulator, we had to do all these kind of very intrinsic measurements of temperature sitting on our micromanipulation stage. You may even see there that the heated stage is showing you a 41 degree setting simply because it's catering towards the loss of temperature from the above the micromanipulator. And again, by raising the temperature to 41 degrees, we are about getting 37.5 in our drops in the dish. I don't want you guys to, th to, to take this temperature reading as gospel. Of course, we all know that you need to validate this in your own lab, okay? Our temperature in the lab might be a bit lower compared to the labs in India. So again, we may need to raise it to 41. But this is just showing you that in the olden days, this is how we used to have to validate our micromanipulators. And of course, nowadays, with these controlled environmental chambers, you just set it at 37 or 37.5, and you are getting a uniform temperature around your micromanipulation systems. And again, this is just showing you my journey um, at using the chambers. This was one of the first ones that I used in 1994, we actually got it custom made over our micromanipulators, just a perspex chamber. This chamber didn't have any CO2 at that point. It was purely just maintaining the temperature. And of course, 
as we went along, we had the um, you know, the chambers optimized. This was one of the Australian systems that we used many years ago in, in, uh, in London. And of course, this was used for micro manipulation. And nowadays in my lab, I use the IVF chamber very routinely for all the functions. And of course, we use the Shivani la chamber or the lab cell. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope that I have been able to kind of deliver some of the very, very important parameters which are very crucial in my opinion as an embryologist in order to optimize the success rates that come from the laboratory. Many thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alpesh. You have left me no space to ask you any question. Okay, that was smooth, simple, and to the point, it hit the bullseye. But one question I definitely will ask you, what is your level of satisfaction one to 10? 10 being the most. So Dr. Kersi, I believe uh, very strongly that the basic needs of the gametes and embryos have to be met. And I think if it causes a bit of um, uh, inconvenience to the embryologist, we should be able to take that. So in my opinion, the IVF chamber, and I've always said this, and I, I, I hope it doesn't sound very commercial or it doesn't sound very cliched, when I say that it's one of the best investments that I have made for my laboratory. Fine. So subsequently it has to be on the menu dish of the IVF requirements. Absolutely. I believe very strongly on the fact that I can probably work with one less laminar airflow cabinet in my lab, but I feel I should have at least one chamber. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Subsequently, regarding its pluses, 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 we'll be in touch with you. And thank you for sharing your knowledge and your expertise. Appreciate it. Fine. Thanks. Yeah. Good day to you, sir. So now we go ahead and uh, we will be asking the opinion. We will be asking for the extra, the, those extras which the Indira embryologists have had working with this chamber what added things they found in it, much to their convenience. And to share this, we have with us their head embryologist, Mr. Naval Shah. Of course, an introduction of him. He's the head quality assurance and operations embryology at India IVF, MSc, zoology endocrinology, advanced diploma in biotechnology from University of Mumbai, having 13 plus years of experience in embryology to an extent that he was a Shrey Young Ambassador 2019. And another icing on the cake, the only Asian from amongst five young ambassadors worldwide. And he has the onus of covering entire aspects of embryology. Also got covered in Humans of Ashray series 2019 a strong background in standard operating practice during processes in the laboratory, special interests as expected, vitrification, training, quality assurance, and has worked in previous other corporate chains like NOAA and Morpheus. Of course, on the other side, a karate champion, avid nature lover, and with a deep interest in photography. So I think Mr. Naval, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, sir. I mean, uh, thank you for that kind introduction. I think we have people like you who were always motivating us at our times. And that's how we have got into the science and everything. And that's how we are right now in this position where we have. So thank you very much for that. I hope my screen is visible. Can you perfect, perfect. Point? It's perfect. Okay. Thank you, sir. So uh, we all have heard, and I think with uh, Niti sir speaking, with the videos of KC sir and Jacob and with the beautiful experience which was shared by Elpe sir, I think my job has bit got bit easier. But I'll still like to let you all know that what are our experiences on lab cell S. Now I'll just put in conflict of interest that we are using this chamber set in the IVF and at 100% location and everything is being done in lab cell S and lab cell I. So what are those? You have already seen videos of what are lab, what is lab cell S and what is lab cell I. So let me quickly go through and make you all know that why this is important. I'll try to give you and connect 
on why this connect is very important to understand the importance of this new gadget which we can have in our lab so let's start with something which is very basic and that is evolution of man how did we evolve so if you know initially it was a prehistoric man who used to just wander in forest insecure and very much intense every time later on they started finding caves and started living in caves the climatic control was much better they could save themselves from the predators and the harsh climatic conditions then they with the evolution we started building hut which can be of mud and grass and the tribal started living in the huts giving them additional security that they are at their safe in their houses then the colonization started with the wooden houses and what did all that of us made us reach it reached to the civilization where we stay in a apartments in the bungalows and we have well constructed houses everywhere and what is most important of this is that we have climatic control in our hands we have acs we have heaters we have everything which we can control to make ourselves as comfortable as possible so why not to replicate it everywhere so let's check the evolution of technology so how did the technology evolve maybe at the initial side we had an horizontal laminar airflow where the operator was never safe because the air was directly moving towards the operator later on because of this we got an vertical laminar airflow but there was no heated stage in this vertical laminar airflow so people started using heating plates so the initial days the scanning was done where the dishes for the scanning were kept on this heated plate but laminar didn't had any heating plate with regards to that uncomfortableness the people started the we, we got the developed laminars now i think almost all labs has integrated laminar airflow integrated heated stage on the laminar airflow and this is something which is very common which we see in the labs all over the world but yes we know that we have to evolve like we have acs and fans and heaters to make ourselves comfortable at our home we being an embryologist we need to give that home to the gametes and embryos to, with which whom we, we work every time and that where comes the beauty of closed working ivf chamber i think at a common man level or a junior level, i think i would be able to uh, convince what why is this particular chamber required every time at the end of the day it is ye dil mange more so why not to give that to the gametes and why not to make them also comfortable and uh, have us get better results indirectly out of that so uh, let's go ahead and see what what is this why did we had to bring this closed working cabinet so this is something which uh, even alpesh sir described initially that we need to give the controlled environment to the gametes and embryos and we get a complete stress free working because of that at oocyte screening level icsi biopsy level you do the first check you do the embryo monitoring you want to do the media change you know it's like the embryologists who are just learning about all these facts they take time and you cannot say that you are taking time i'll not train you obviously we need people in system we need the expert as and the expert size comes only with the handling practices so why not to give bit more comfort even to the embryologist so that he also takes time and he also learns in a nice way without him also under being the stress so what are the salient features of this as almost everyone has mentioned we have a temperature we have a co2 controlled atmosphere which maintains the ph and doesn't lead to any shock for the gametes and oocytes we have a hepa filtered air and a carbon filter so we have an activated carbon inside which lends us to a voc free air inside both the cabinets of lab cell s and lab cell i and we also have an humidified chamber so it also maintains the relative humidity in this particular chamber and it indirectly also maintains the osmolality so when we have all this at us why not to use it so this is in general the principle of closed working cabinet so if you can see we have a complete air blowing inside the cabinet it goes through the hepa filter so this arrows you can see we have an hepa filters in this particular area from there it goes to the heater from there the air gets heated up and with the blower it goes through this uniform channel below which is a single lane and from there it comes into the humidified tray and from there as the air is heated up the heated molecules of air passes through the water takes the more humidity along with it and goes into the cabinet and gives us the relative humidity which we require in the cabinet itself so that's how this entire lab cell s and lab cell i works so going further this is again a comparison and i think mr alpish has already explained this to us so we are safe 
with regards to temperature, carbon dioxide, pH of media, and any osmotic stress which comes onto the gametes. At the end of the day, we don't have to worry as much as we have to worry on the open system. And that is where it gives a peace of mind even to an embryologist. So just moving ahead, as people have said initially, even if you have QAQC protocols, which is very stringent, but the manipulation which we deem the open system has a stress combined to it. And with closed working chamber, we have a well control over that. It has an accuracy of just 0.1 degrees Celsius up and down. And it has all the chambers to uh, all the parameters to maintain the three vital parameters that is temperature, humidity, and pH, which indirectly controls osmolality. So that is an advantage of having CWC in our system. But I think this is all which we have already been said. And that's a lot of contemplation. And let's get scientific. Is there anything? Is any evidence? I don't know. Maybe we don't have that many studies which mentions uh, importance of CWC. But we do have a study who mentions that you need to use IVF chamber in your lab if it is possible for you to use. So what is the gold standard? All of us who are actually looking and setting up IVF lab these days, whom do you follow? It's basically the Cairo consensus which you follow. And Cairo consensus basically came in two parts. Initially, 2018 had a Cairo consensus in which uh, Alpesh, or Alpesh, Mr. Alpesh Doshi was also a part of a team. And in 2020, we got a guidelines on Cairo, of Cairo consensus for IVF culture conditions, which mentioned that there is only one thing truly important in IVF lab, and that's everything. So that being a gold standard for an air quality and an IVF lab, what does that mention? So here's is what it mentions. It is clearly mentioned about IVF chamber in the Cairo consensus. They have described what IVF chamber is. What we are talking about today is closed working chamber. And it is nothing but an IVF chamber, which was described by the team in a Cairo consensus. And the description, the cutout, which you see over here comes right from that paper. It's not what I have written. And why have they written? They have also given the reasons. So let it be the handling practices. Every attempt should be made to maintain the temperature of oocyte and embryos as close as possible to 37 degrees Celsius. And this could be achieved with the use of controlled environment chamber that is closed working cabinet. When it comes to uh, physiochemical parameters, they have clearly mentioned that they have substantial weakness when we are using vertical laminar airflows or horizontal laminar airflows. And that is where IVF chamber comes into the picture and that will give you best possible outcome. At the level of pH, they have again mentioned that when one considers the pH changes will show similarities to the temperature changes, then the argument of controlled environment in an IVF chamber becomes very compelling. So yes, we have mentions of CWC that is closed working chambers or a cabinet, so-called as IVF chambers in the papers in the scientific writings also. Why have they mentioned all these things? It's very clear that when you have a benchtop incubator from which you remove the dish and take it to the closed working cabinet, the pH is generally maintained because the lid is closed and it gives that additional buffer. When we take this dish onto the closed working chamber and then open it over there, we have all the three parameters which are maintained in a closed working chamber. You close the dish over there and bring it back, put it in the benchtop incubator. Within 30 seconds, the climate, the environment is normalized and it re-equilibrates everything. So this particular points are also again mentioned in the Cairo consensus guidelines. And that is why they always, they have preferred that people should use closed working cabinet. It is good to have, not must to have. So then it at the end of the day, it depends upon the user. Do they want to have this good to have gadget in their lab or not? Now, why is all this been mentioned? And it is all only because of the stress. So what has an, what stress leads to? You know, that stress can come with regard to air quality, VOC, temperature fluctuations, environmental stress outside the incubator, osmolality, pH. And we have a wonderful paper. I think this was one of the most well-read paper of Jason Swain that the disturbances or an IVF air lab quality can also lead to aneuploid embryos. So it is not that you may not have a good culture or your embryos may not reach a particular blast. So blast rate and good blast rate may affect it. Even if you have a good blast, which can give a potent pregnancy, but because of IVF lab air, the good blast may be an aneuploid, which also you need to, you need to correct. So 
one stress leads to another stress and once any of the one parameter gets affected it leads to the chain reaction which at end of the day disturbs the entire culture and that's why we have to reduce the stress where cwcs come into the picture and which is the most important criteria where do you have to uh, handle this stress it is not it is at the oocyte level alpesh doshi sir very well explained in his talk that how mitotic spindle get affected at the oocyte level and i don't have to explain all that thing again but it was also mentioned in a paper which was written by gardner that if you have to manage stress you have to manage the most at an oocyte level because by the time it reach to the blastocyst it has some of its own buffer to get to a handle that stress but oocyte is not capable of handling that stress and that's why you need to make sure that the scanning level at the denudation level at the icsi level you have to give the controlled climate to the gametes so that they develop at its best potential and they give us the ultimate desired outcome what we desire for so that's all what we have in evidence with regards to science and it's in science i don't have to prove you have all seen it so let's go ahead and see the practicality we have seen what it contemplates we have seen the product descriptions we have seen that science has also said that yes you have to use cwcs they are good to have so is that a reality so let's check we did an experiment for the temperature variations in an ivf lab with different types of workstations and what did it brought out yes it brought out that the closed working chamber at the first minute so this is a dish which was prepared for icsi which was kept for half an hour at incubation in an uh, uh, incubator and then it was brought on to the various stations and the temperature was checked and if you see at one minute almost all of them were 36.9 were laminar with the flow on had 36.2 and at the end of 5 minutes it was only closed working chamber which was a 36.8 the icsi workstation went to 35.4 and the laminar with flow on went to 34.9 and then when we went on to the 10 minutes it was only closed working chamber which maintained 37 degrees celsius and none of them maintained 37 rest all of them fall either at 35 or below 35 so it's proven and you all can do this experiment it is something which is not only for me you can try it at your setup as even mr uh, alpesh said that they also used to do such kind of qc checks in the earlier days and we also do such a qc check whenever required and it's a part of a troubleshooting and that is where you also confirm that yes cwcs are best when it comes to the handling of oocytes gametes or embryos now let's go on because what happens in reality if you don't have cwcs what would you do you would try to pace up your procedures now i think that is something which even alpesh doshi mentioned that you try to learn up you try to pick up at a very fast rate and you try to bring some other advanced technology but you don't work at the basic level so if you speed up is that speed really leading to precision is that speed going in hand with your quality with the speed up of the uh, learning the gametes may get prone to the uh, to the stress we may have a higher degeneration rate the oocytes may get lysed and at the training when even like i have are almost 140 150 embryologists right now under me and then i need to make it sure that everyone gets an equal opportunity to grow and that's where the cwc is coming to picture because i know that i can give them bit extra hand or a buffer that even if they are slow but if they learn with the perfection then gradually after one year or two year they will do the speed icc which will be the perfection with the speed icc but at the start only they will not learn, try to learn it at a very fast rate which may at the end of the day disrupt their real technique so that's where cwc is coming to the picture and uh, to end up with yes we have discussed where uh, we have certain myths which comes that yes it is a cramped space it has a compromised hand movements we may have an impaired visibility the dishes may drop here and there but no it's just a matter of few days you start working in a closed working cabinet and you can definitely manage it very easily there is ample of space inside we have a sliding chamber so that icsi is not getting disturbed and it's very easy to clean and it doesn't require much time to get uh, much time to get adapted to the closed working chambers so i would definitely say that yes if we need to invest in a technology we need to understand our gadget better 
we have understood it and we have started training people right from the start in cwcs itself so that they get used to it as i gave the uh, resemblance of an evolution of man and evolution of a technology yes today i can still stay in hut i can stay in wooden furniture a wooden house where we don't have acs we don't have fans but are we thinking that right now no if i want a house right now i get everything with it then when we are developing an ivf lab it should be a part of initial investment and later on if we start uh, we can definitely bring it any time but if that is what you start with then that particular parameter that it is costly will never come into your mind and with that you start your lab with the perfection so understand your gadget better welcome the technology and i think you will get the best success rates achieved because at the end of the day we do all of this for the patients whom we work and we need to satisfy them we need to give them success and with the welcoming of technology which is really helpful at basic level it helps us to give them the best so that's it from my side thank you for giving me this opportunity and um, stage is on to you uh, kc sir thank you very much yeah i think before you go i didn't ask you a few questions i mean just suggestion or a cross talk see sure. we are all ready to entertain a new change now a change is a change now how to change that change this is very difficult for all of us that's number 1 right and, and number 2 is a change always really responsible for elevating our results or is a change at least getting us to the brink of the boundary and then subsequently there are other multifactorial things which can be implemented in a proper success and last but not the least another question is that this consensus always introduce a new 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 thing but is that change can be accepted by all in the field like say like a single working doctor it is individual capacity how much innovations can he bring in this lab because it's there that the innovations are directly proportional to the cost factor which goes on increasing so at the same time at the back of his mind he to always has an inhibition oh my god that is this much that is this much so right. always there is a distance between the cup and the lip means even if i want to introduce a new thing but somehow i have held back right. and as you are aware that in infertility the most important is the cost factor vis-a-vis -vis the success rates right so these are what certain unseen barricades what i would say that they are actually preventing us from bringing out the new change but anyway a new change is always welcome as long yes. as it's successful and it brings a smile to the otherwise hopeless rejected couples but at the same time let me now ensure to get these gadgets will definitely optimize the embryo quality maybe it will not be ideal enough for me to tell me that they are really instrumental in jacking up your rates i hope at least you agree to that yes fine fine so anyway brilliant thank you very much well so thank now you, we sir. go across for pleasure pleasure having you thank so you, now we come across to maybe i can say a challenge or maybe a little other side of the uh, other side of the moon i have with me my old colleague dr prabhakar singh well who will be telling me like how they used to continue this technique till today and how successful they are or maybe they are quite happy with what they are doing or they might say that the new change it might be necessary it might be essential but the satisfaction level where it lies so but before i just switch over the mic to him dr prabhakar singh is a scientific director and co-founder of nimaya women's health center in surat part and parcel 21st century ivf centers mbbs md msc in clinical embryology a heavy powerful clinical embryology experience since last 10 plus years also he heads the embryology training offered by 21st century hospital and of course like how we had another prior speaker as a karate champion he is a marathon runner avid reader book lover book lover is very important because today in this electronic world people don't like reading books but i appreciate having a book with you which you can use it to your ease and with the same sense of perfection i think dr prabhakar singh would definitely enlighten us upon his experience as how he has utilized icsi in the open chamber dr prabhakar floor is yours yeah 
uh, good morning everyone can you see the slides sir yes sir we can we can clear you are loud and clear yeah can you see the slides i just yes sir clear clear clarity is also there perfect thank you guys perfect sir. warm introduction perfect and, sir. thank you uh, after uh, these three talks mujhe to aisa lag raha hai ki i am the rahul gandhi after modi and shah and gadkari have spoken i feel the rahul gandhi in the house with the task of talking about uh, it in a very uh, different way so many so, a battles are won single handedly <laughs> <laughs> anyway continue sir it's good to have everybody here on a sunday and uh, thank you ashish bhai and karsi sir for uh, giving me this opportunity to be the devil's advocate and trying to represent a huge mass of uh, clinical embryologist who uh, kind of don't have close working chambers they have their own concerns they have their own issues uh, so we'll just go uh, through that a uh, little bit so as uh, navel had already said that uh, do no harm is what the basic i mean the fundamental the whole idea of an ivf lab is that uh, you should not do any harm and uh, the lesser harm you do the better is you know everything i mean your cleavage rates your fertilization rates because if you control the environment you control the air quality you control the temperature ph everything so it's like you trying to maintain as physiological temperature as possible and that is why you want to optimize your culture conditions so most of the damage caused is due to environmental factors as it has already been discussed but what i will try to discuss is why we have to uh, why close working chamber may not be you know it is an ideal system but it may not fit into the indian scenario so it is the most time consuming and technically demanding step icsi right and maintaining ideal conditions is difficult we all know that whenever we are doing icsi at the back of the mind we always feel that uh for a time zyada lag raha hai uh you know temperature drop ho jayega so that's the primary concern of any embryologist you might be 15 years in practice 25 years in practice it is the most commonest uh, uh worry that you always have you might be doing speed icsi you might be doing like you know one in one oocyte in one minute but still it is always a problem so how do we do that so how do you you overcome it with this close working systems so i was doing a little research on the literature and as uh, the previous speakers have already mentioned there's very little literature on close working chambers in terms of uh so as a proof of concept it works because it tries to help in doing or maintaining things that we are worried about right we are worried about temperature drops we are worried about ph changes we are worried about uh, humidity so theoretically it solves those problems but this was the first time i think in 1982 when there was no icsi they were doing insemination right in those in that year where a neonatal box was retrofitted to be used as a close working chamber in uh, 1982 and uh, it was used to do inseminations and screening so i mean obviously there was only one uh, microscope on which you used to do both and so the retrofitting cost them around uh, almost 9 9000 us dollars so pros are many but as i said is ivf chamber but is it for all like for somebody somebody like an indira or morpheus or nova who have like you know 50 centers 100 centers across the nation where there is a centralized team which wants to control a lot of parameters in the lab you do you want to reduce the human error you want to reduce the human involvement in the process you want to automate most of the things right that is how you grow and that is how you optimize results that is how you improve results so that's a fantastic way of upscaling your center but for somebody who is like me who has like only a few labs or somebody who works in only who has only one ivf center in a very small town uh, uh, in india uh, i am bothered about one my lab i have one embryologist who is dedicated to me and i know that he will not uh, you know kind of do anything i don't have a very uh, very high paying client or you know i am catering to the very middle class or lower middle class section of the society can i keep on adding equipment in the lab and then trying to you know recover that cost from the patient so that is one of the major factors so if you rely if i rely on my embryologist if it is i have a in house dedicated embryologist 
or maybe I have an embryologist who is doing like say four five centers in my city, and I'm pretty happy with the kind of fertilization rates or whatever he's doing. Does this make sense? That is something that you have to worry about. Eventually, any purchase in the IVF lab has to be run by the clinician. Very few centers. Uh, I think I what I can remember is like 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 Keshav is there, right? He owns his own lab. Like I am there, we own our own lab. Like Indira, the embryologist, is one of the founders. So these labs, the embryologist has a huge say in what you buy in the lab, what you install in the lab. But it doesn't apply to most of the lab. Most of the lab, the clinician will say, Are yaar, das lab ka ye chamber lena hai. Does it make sense? Aap uske bina kar lena. So that is what that is how the Indian mentality works. Second, maintenance breakdown calibration. Again, it is an it is a piece of equipment which requires maintenance, which it will break down. It is not that nothing is built to last and it will break down. Even the best equipment will break down. It will require calibration. So that is an added cost of maintenance of breaking down that you will have to bear. Cleaning decontamination, it might be a little difficult, but as, as Naval has already mentioned, that it's not very complicated. So, okay, let's go with that. And obviously, there is a resistance from the embryology team to understand, to adopt this technology. So how do we normally do it in open system? Do we use heated stages? We have already talked about it, that they are not very ideal, but then that is the best we can do. We overlay it with oil, as already mentioned, that does not guarantee protection. Uh, uh, we use hippies based buffered media as droplets for oocytes while doing ICSI. Okay, so that gives you a little bit more extra time. And keeping only limited number of oocytes in the dish at a time. So, informal consensus amongst all the embryologists is that you keep almost like seven, eight oocytes at a time. You finish that, put the dish back in, wait for some time, bring that out again, and then you do again ICSI. To the remaining two sides, or you can rotate. Suppose you are doing two, three cases, you rotate between these cases so that at a time, not all the sides are subjected to this. The longer a dish is outside, obviously the temperature is going to go down longer. But does it add value? Of course it does. But as I said, there is very little evidence in terms of studies which says that or randomized studies that if i am doing ICSI in this chamber i do a cohort study where half of them are done in the open chamber half of them are done in this chamber then does it change in good hands open system might be as good as a closed system i don't know i'm just proposing it's a hypothesis nobody has disproved it and nobody has proved it so based on theory the system works well if you are a clinician who wants to have like peace of mind, I want like a, I want to control the environment as much as possible, you buy it. It's it it it's it it is it is a hedge to uh, the clinician where you are not very sure of the embryologist one, where you have a new embryologist coming in your lab and you want to train them, then it's a very interesting piece of equipment to do that value. To conclude, it adds value. It also adds cost. There is a mindset change. Uh, it can be useful and economic if produced on even more. Just, like if Shivani is supposed to sell these IVF chambers in more quantity, I am sure Ashish Bhai will reduce the cost. Right? So if more people buy it like anything else, it will reduce the cost. But compared to an IVF hood, Currently, it is almost like four to five times the cost. Like it's almost like ten to eight to ten lakhs is the current cost of an IVF chamber from Shivani. So you, if adding that, if it gives you a peace of mind, uh, I am sure it is a very interesting piece of equipment. The only thing is, uh, what about vitrification? If you are going to do vitrification in this chamber, you want room temperature. So again, you'll have to shut it off, or maybe have another workstation which is not heated have a stereo zoom so you will need a separate workstation where you will be doing your vitrification or you will have to do vitrification here on this particular chamber but you will have to shut it down get it to room temperature and then you have to do it second aspect if you're doing witnesses suppose you want to add witnessing system so is it compatible with that is it compatible with those plates those bars or whatever additional gadgets or hardware that you would require uh, in your workstation to add witnessing to your protocols. 
is it compatible with that so that is something that uh, uh, i i did not see uh, anything in those videos or anything so that needs to be uh, discussed and eventually uh, you will have to convince your gynecologist that this is a uh, definite uh, it has got definite value in your lab thank you so much uh, well dr prabhakar and dr naval you both have me in a sandwich effect means you are the two breads and i am the little meat who is enclosed in between the two your points were also very very elucidated but uh, let me drive the i think you both of you will agree that a lab success is never judged by the expensive gadgets that is not the simple barometer or a yardstick of success definitely we will improvise the conditions but there are many hurdles to cost to cross across to it and of course every new innovation a little bit of mindset has to be drilled into it well you are happy with the conditions what you are working on go ahead there's nobody preventing you but the change is always necessary but it doesn't mean a change is always for the betterment at the same time let us make ourselves quite clear that we have a little thinking that whenever a change is there we are just going to break the barrier of success i think it's quite a known factor that success in embryology of course is dependent upon the gadgetry upon your sops upon your qa qc blah 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 but i think is the quality gametes which help us achieve that trick i hope you agree to it both of you right right so it's a basic ingredients but anyway the points were very well debated by both of you as you very nice i very rightly suggested i am in a sandwich effect so i better leave the orders to the audience to decide for themselves and now to have a little on hand view about the convenience mode of operation about how easy it is for a skilled embryologist to negotiate the icsi and how to put behind the apprehensions which many a people have we have a live demonstration from the lab which will be headed by naval himself yeah so uh, thank you kc sir and i'll just uh, let you know ki we have uh, niti sir who is down in the lab as i was speaking and we required someone down in the lab so niti sir okay. is there and sure. niti sir will be heading this particular live demo uh, from the lab itself so he'll be given a backhand commentary along with it yes he will be giving Please. backhand that, commentary so we, we that. yes we do have a, a team down in the lab and uh, niti sir will give a, a commentary behind along with the live demo so prabhakar sir thank you very much your points were taken up very sir. well so i think this debate can run a year or even more than that what say <laughs> really yeah so i think the 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 battlefield is open and the swords are drawn <laughs> something like that <laughs> and both have champions one is a karate one is a sprinter Anyway, no, we don't require sword right now, sir. It will be just shield, which will be requiring to defend with the questions and answers. We don't require to fight any which way, sir. <laughs> But the shield could be even a simple paper shield. Anyway, over to the lab. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Doctor Murugan. Uh, Doctor yeah. Kersi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you and see you quite clear, loud and clear, and visualization is perfect. Am I loud and clear? Perfect. Perfect. yeah so uh, i will try to uh, you know show around the lab and try to uh, uh, go from you know traditionally what we used to do and what is the difference you know in this chambers uh, if there is any questions uh, regarding the operations of the chambers uh, we will have some time in the middle while we are showing and doing the demonstration uh so dr kesri uh, you can put forward uh, you know some of the questions which is there sure, so sure. i'll ask someone to you know let me know okay. but let us start with a, a simple laminar flow which you know uh, which traditionally uh, most of the labs have been using it and still a lot of labs uh, use this kind of system uh, i would just like to show uh, a dish uh, kept on the laminar flow um can you focus here yeah so right now you have laminar flow air being run and there is uh, you know uh, air which is the room temperature i would say right now the room temperature might be 23 to 24 so you have these uh, laminar curtains falling on this particular dish 
so your top can never be 37 degrees centigrade and uh, i have just put a dish with the oil but there will be few dishes which uh, you might use without oil filled with uh, uh, filled with uh, uh, any of the media uh, so the bottom part is 37 and the top part is 23 24 and the more you expose this particular dish uh, outside the incubator uh, there will always be a temperature variations which you can't control. Uh, the second issue that uh, we see is that the lab uh, is, is a pretty big environment to control and take care. Uh, the air quality, of course, there are HVACs, there are systems in place which, which guarantees the air exchange. But there is always people who are inside the lab uh, which can change the conditions of the lab and the air quality. And also you cannot control it 100%, though you can ensure that you try to achieve and control it to an optimum level, right? So this is the kind of systems which we have been uh, using, uh, you know, uh, in the past and a lot of people are still using it. Uh, now let us shift. Uh, to a well, can, I, can, I, can I just system. interrupt you, sir? Dr. Uh, though yeah. the video has already... Sir, there is one question regarding that. It is there that the AHU and air quality of the lab will still be important if you are utilizing the closed chamber or once you are satisfied with the internal environment, the external quality of the lab of the air is not much of an importance or you say or you suggest that both are important at the same I time. I can't hear. You have to repeat the question. Yeah, can I repeat it? Can I repeat the question? Sir, I have a bit of problem in hearing you. So okay. uh, you, if you repeat the question. Yeah, I'll repeat it once again. People are- or Naval, can you answer it uh, if that is possible? Yeah, Naval, can you hear me? Hello? Naval, are you there? Can you answer the question? Because I am unable to hear uh, what he says. Uh, okay, sir, you can continue. You continue now. You can continue. Okay, so we'll we'll continue. Uh, yeah, I think you Naval continue. is there. Yeah, fine. So you can pop in your questions and Naval can tell me and we both sure, can sure. answer it as and when okay. we go. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'll change from this traditional system to the uh, 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 to the laminar flow now. So. So this is a stereo zoom as uh, it was shown um, in the video that you have seen. So typically all the oocyte scannings happen here. So what we try to do with this kind of system is we try to keep it near the, uh, you know, near the OT entrance so that as soon as someone uh, does a pickup, the tubes actually come and lie here, right? And this particular environment is heated. This is again kind of heated. Uh, so as soon as the tube comes from the OT, it goes into this setup and it sits here, right? And the embryologists have time uh, to do the scanning part and other part. Uh, and the tubes are beautifully sitting inside at 37. The embryologist doesn't have to hurry or be in any stressful condition, uh, which would otherwise be in an open kind of system. I'll just uh, try to uh, show you, um, uh, though uh, there has been a video where the air circulation has been shown, but I will just try uh, uh, to show you. Uh, you can point to these uh, filters which are here. So this is where the air is sucked in and in and at the back of this suction area, there are filters which filter the air and the air filter, uh, air filtration, which is done. There is, there is a, uh, the air is heated with a heater, which is placed here and the air travels at the bottom of this particular uh, station. And it goes all the way to this part where you have a tray, which is, uh, 
which you can use it if you want humidity in your system. If you don't want humidity in your system, you can uh, don't fill the water here. And the air goes through this particular uh, 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 water tray and it pops out through here. And then it again goes back into the uh, air vent that I showed you. So that way is, there are three things which are happening in these chambers. Uh, first is uh, your, you have a uniform temperature cover across the region. There is nothing like you have a temperature of 37 at the bottom top. There is no temperature. The entire chamber, the entire dish, everything is at 37. The second good thing that happens is, uh, especially for this particular process where the things are happening without oil, there is a humidified cover. So even if you uh, do your pickups for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, which normally it takes time, um, you, you don't have evaporation and, and, and you know, your pH is kind of maintained. Uh, the third good thing is this chamber, because it has HEPA filter and because it has VOC filter, and there is so less uh, of, uh, of an area to take care. So, you know, compared <laughs> to the entire lab, uh, it is easier and it is more efficient to maintain the air quality of this particular chamber. You know, this is one of the bigger advantage what uh, KC sir has also told, a lab inside a lab. So this is a lab inside a lab where it is easier to control these three parameters uh, compared to, you know, the entire lab. Um, and as, uh, uh, you know, uh, there was some, probably there might be some questions on uh, how easy or how difficult is it uh, to do it. So if you, if you see the design of this particular chambers, first thing is it's, it's ergonomically designed, how you sit on the incub, uh, on the laminar flow and how you sit on these chambers. There is not too much of a difference. The only difference is on your elbow because with these kind of systems, your elbows go forward because you are operating here. And with the normal laminar flow system, your elbows are at the back, right? This is not too much of an adjustment to do, but in terms of where the microscope level is and where you are sitting, that is almost similar to a normal laminar flow, right? So ergonomically, it is fine. Second thing, the way you operate, um, of course, it's not a very free area, though it is sufficiently fine to move your arms inside, but any new thing takes a bit of time to adjust, uh, but it's not too much of uh, changing of the practice that you need to do. People can easily get adjusted and used to in this particular space. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, spending a bit of time on this machine and you get used to it. It's not complicated, it's very easy. Um, there are uh, additional slots made inside this where you can keep your pipettes where you can hang your pipettes, where you can keep your dishes. So in that way, it gives a, a, a good, uh, you know, environment or a good uh, space inside these chambers to uh, do the, uh, to put your equipment, to put your dishes, to put everything inside, right? If you can just move out, I'll just try to show. Yeah, so there, were, there probably might be some questions on cleaning and other aspect also. So I'll just show how easy is it to clean. So once you are done with uh, this thing, it is just these two, three screws and the whole chamber opens up, right? And then you have easy access to everywhere you want to go to. You can clean using USAFE and other cleaning agents to clean this from inside. You can remove this tray, you can drain the water, you can clean it. There is nothing else that you need to do. These arm ports, uh, you know, they go bad with time, but they are available at disposable. So you can change these, these are normal plastic, uh, good quality plastic, non uh, VOC free uh, plastic, and you can change these, these are available at disposable. Other than this, there is not too much required to maintain these chambers. Uh, I think uh, now we'll shift from this to uh, ICSI setup, and we'll just try to see uh, is it difficult or is it easy to set up the needle in a in, in a closed chambers while doing a ICSI? 
as well as we'll try to show uh, you know while doing the xc how easy or difficult it is so we'll just shift over to the uh, close working chamber where the xc machine is kept देखो नीडल लगाने डॉक्टर केट सी यू नीड टू अनम्यूट यू सर दिस इज यस सो दिस इज अ a closed chamber it's it's slightly bigger than the stereo room because you need more space inside to accumulate uh, to put up the xc machine and its control uh, but you know talking about the same it's relatively lesser space to to tackle and take care so we'll just do one step which is uh, uh, you know installing the needles in the chamber so i'll just uh, ask the cameraman to show from the this thing so we are just trying to uh, these are the old ones which we use uh, with the oil on the injection needles so by the time he does this process uh, i can i can show inside that uh, this system also has a fitted uh, a plate for heating uh, though the whole chamber is 37 degree heated Uh, we can also install uh, a metal plate uh, either way whatever is you know good for your practice and your lab you can use the same thing um, even the laser module uh, is installed uh, inside so you know all it's all all the modules which are there uh, they all work very good in this chamber and there is no space problem as such uh is it clear the yeah is clear is clear so we are just trying to put the injection needle inside and now we'll try to install it on the arm can you show it from the back side uh, so that people can see how they are installing i mean zoom is okay but you can show the, the person also how is he doing it just take it from far yeah so this particular machine has two ports which you can open compared to a normal uh, machine where the stereo zoom was kept which had a single port so you know your um, uh, the oocyte handling part you know can happen from here and the injection part if you want to do any changes on the on the needle and other thing they can happen from here so just show uh, so you can see it's it's very easy it's not uh, something which you need to uh, worry about it's it's as simple as how you uh, do it uh, you know in a normal setup so i'll 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 uh, i'll give you a very uh, good example uh, when we first uh, try to start uh, in 2011 uh, these chambers we ordered from the very first day and we that time used to call uh, embryologists from outside and 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 you know he was really shocked to see these chambers and we literally had to take this hood off and uh, you know that is how he did the xc but then later we decided that uh, you know we have to use these chambers and uh, you know next time we actually put the chambers and we asked the same embryologist to do it uh, who was again coming for a batch and uh, he was able to do it so this just tells you uh, a incident where you know one of the pe person who is not used to working on these chambers actually could do it uh, very easily uh, so they have sufficient space uh ergonomically they are the same as uh, you are working on a open uh, system and you just need to get adjusted to uh, you know working in this kind of arm port 
there is sufficient space inside there is no space crunch um and you know the kind of environment that it gives you is something which uh, which which would be you know uh, better off especially when you are really concerned about the quality of the treatment that you give to the patient so i think uh, from here uh, since i have already shown how easy is it to install a needle uh, we have prepared another machine uh, where the needle is already installed uh, so we'll just go uh, to that particular machine and try to do a ixi in this machine just to show uh, how easy is it to do the ixi for the same Uh, you're doing sperm. You have the output from the machine. Yes. Okay. So you can see the output from the machine, uh, and if you can, if I, if, if if this whole frame is visible in the camera. uh you have the same i mean person sitting it's almost the same way as how it is um can you just show the dish uh so this is a metal plate uh you know where it's a metal heating plate uh the dish is kept on that you have the holding and the injection installed on this machine and a dish kept here so any movement on the dishes uh any movement that you want to do on the dishes any thing it, it happens from the top port uh and all the controls uh you know happen from the bottom port when you want to do the injection or you want to move the needle in any particular direction it happens to the bottom port and any manipulation that you want to do you can put your hand here and if if there is more space that you require you can always open these two and this port lifts up can you just go here and show uh, his hand movement also just to just to you know uh, just to see how much space is there inside and if there is any space constraint okay and come can you come this side and show this particular part now the beauty about this particular port is that this sheet that you see here it can slide to any direction so when you are moving your hand you can move it to any direction this way or this way uh, so it moves this 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 particular uh, sheet moves with your hand in any direction so it's not a fixed thing it it moves with your hand so he just trying to get the needles down uh, to do a xc uh can you just go a bit far just show him you know completely yeah yeah so so i mean it's 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 a normal uh, uh, you know normal way how you do a xc in a open chamber or a open setup it is almost the same way you do a xc in a closed system 
uh, you just need to get adjusted, uh, which is which is normal with each and every machine. Uh, any new machine that comes to your lab, you just need to slightly uh, change your practice or get adjusted to that kind of system and setup. But in terms of you know the the design of this particular uh, system, the ergonomic uh, aspect of this particular system, the movement of the hand to access uh, each and every uh, component of the equipment which is kept inside, be it stereo zoom or be it the XC machine. Uh, it's almost the same as uh, an open system. There is not too much of a difference. Uh, but one advantage or the advantage which I discussed, uh, which it gives you that it is relatively a small area which you are playing around with. And it gives you more, uh, you know, comfort level, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, being sure that you are able to maintain a good quality environment for all your gametes, be it sperm, be it egg or be it embryo. Uh, we also do the, um, when we try to see the embryos, we put in the same machine uh, and we try to do the embryo quality assessment. The, the, the only uh, two things that we would do outside or three things which you would do outside these chambers is uh, loading of the XC dishes, uh, doing an embryo transfer uh, and doing a freezing process. These are the only three things which we do outside the chambers. Rest the other, uh, you know, embryology processes, including the biopsy, uh, we do inside these chambers only. So I think that's pretty much from my side. Uh, we can probably go in the question answer session. Uh, and uh, uh, just uh, Dr. Casey, if you can just give us uh, 30 seconds uh, so we can. Uh, sit at the right place uh, where we can, you know, hear you and answer to the questions. Sure, sure, sir, sure. Just bear with us for a few more seconds till the interchange takes place, please. Thank you. Novel, when you are ready, just log on. Hello. Yeah, Dr. Casey, can you yes, hear Yeah, yeah. So uh, the questions, the first is how to ensure sterile conditions in the chamber. Okay, so the chambers after the end of the uh, daily work are cleaned with uh, first USIF and second with uh, double distilled water sterilized. Uh, so that way you try to ensure that the inside of the chambers are sterilized in full chair. And uh, the water that we use, again, is a double distilled autoclave water. Uh, and there's only one tray which is movable, which is the tray where you keep the water, uh, that you again clean it after the end of the day. So maintaining a sterile condition, how you do it on your laminar flow, the same way you do it on the chamber. There is no difference. Another question is, if I have a lab, do I need to have two closed chambers, the I and the S? So uh, we, we are doing uh, two different procedures, right? Which is first collecting uh, of the oocyte and using the stereo zoom, right? So we want to campus or 
enclose the studio room in a in a closed chamber hence uh, this is one thing which i particularly feel is more of a critical process and the closed chamber plays a really important role in this because when you are doing this process uh, you are you don't have oil overlay uh, and this process normally takes a lot of time uh, because it again will depend on your clinician's sk clinician skill level how much time does it take to get all the uh, follicles retrieve out of the patient right so this is one thing which i i personally feel that uh, chamber has a very important role to play the second is your ixi setup uh, with the ixi setup because there is oil overlay um uh, you know there 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 can be situation when you prepare one dish do your sperm mobilization or you know take less number of oocyte in a dish and then do it and then change the dish uh, and again do it that is one way to go about it but with these chambers we can we can uh, the, the only good thing is uh, uh, you have a temperature cover uh, if you using a bicarbonate media you can put on the co2 also uh, and you can spend more time Uh, and be mentally uh, free that uh, your conditions are not too much altered. So that way, is, yeah, in the XC machine, it sure. provides that cover. Fine. There is one question from Mr. Chiranjeev Bhatia, and he has suggested, or he had asked rather, how long does it take to get back to the set points in the closed chamber once the pot is opened for setting up needles? Or rather, he means to say, how fast is the recovery time of the parameters of temperature and CO two? so it doesn't take too long because you have a continuous air being poured yes when you open the port uh, the bigger part which i showed you but not these arm port which are the plastic covers when these open up you don't have too much of a temperature difference but yeah when you open up that whole thing there will be difference but the recovery of the temperature is pretty fast because uh, there is sufficient air and you whenever you open it it's actually the air going out it's not the air coming inside which will cool down your environment so it it's slightly different than uh, than a normal incubator a box type incubator because when you open the incubator the outside ambient air goes inside in this particular case when you open the arm port the hot air goes out so that's the difference one more question is is the s chamber sufficient to accommodate any types of stereo zooms or only a particular company brand or means is it adjustable to any microscope brand Yeah, 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 I think uh, Shivani would be better to answer it. But yeah, we have been using. Uh, uh, I, I think we have been talking about fitting Nikon long back, so which they have, uh, which they said they would do it. Uh, and I think we used in Nikon for some time, but now we use uh, Olympus. Uh, so I think it, it, it is not a problem. The, the thing is, it, it has a cut at the, at the top, uh, right? which which is layered with the additional plastic so whatever micro uh, whatever uh, microscope type changes we can always cut that plastic on the top to uh, accommodate any of this stereo microscope so the, the 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 protruding head will be measured accordingly and the plastic will be accommodated accordingly yes yes fine and uh, is the height adjustment in both the chambers available so uh, initially when they made the first prototype that time it wasn't uh, 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 there wasn't a, a trolley which would move the whole system up and down but the, now there is a hydro hydraulic interface which exists which is controlled by a button so you can move your uh, chambers up and down using that hydraulic control. yeah uh, one more question is how frequently or how how safe it is to ensure the embryo toxicity of the plastic cover uh i think this plastic i uh, i think shivani would be better to answer it but this uh, uh, acrylic or the plastic is uh, you know tested for uh, toxicity okay fine and one more we are ensuring that the air inside the chamber is ideal of an ahu quality so simultaneously do we also need the ahu quality air in the existing lab or the air quality in the chamber is sufficient No. so as i told you that you know you can't have 100% process uh, happening inside the chamber there will still be some process which will happen outside the chambers uh, and the second part is when you are moving your dishes from the chambers to the incubator uh, you are moving it inside the lab right so the air quality inside the lab has to be maintained the, there is no shortcut uh, to it but Uh, putting these chambers uh, you just have better control over the air quality when you are trying to handle gametes 
Yeah. And uh, from the lab oriented, again, point viewpoint, a question has come is, any significant improvement in the percentage of your fertilization in ICSI and IVF in closed chamber compared to the open? So it will be difficult for us to answer this question. And as I read in the um, in the uh, Cairo consensus also, that it is kind of difficult uh, to compare uh, and, and do these experiments uh, because of the changing variables and you know, too many things change. It is difficult to compare. But as far as we are concerned, uh, from the day one, we have worked in these chambers and uh, we don't have a comparison data uh, to be working outside the chambers compared to working inside the chambers. And the, yeah, the, the, the occurrence or the, the periodicity with which we can change the water in the humidity tray, how frequently you change it after every batch or cycle, every week or whatever it is. So, it is asked from Mr. Jishu Seth. Right. So there, see, if, if you have like 10 pickups a day, uh, after a certain point of time, the water will dry up. So you just top it up with water. Uh, after you are done for the day, uh, you remove the tray, you clean it, uh, you know, properly, uh, and then you install it back. And next day when you are coming, you just fill the tray with water. Uh, just wanted to tell everyone that it normally takes 45 minutes for these chamber uh, to stabilize the temperature inside. Right. So in the morning, uh, before you do your pickups, you run the machine for 45 minutes uh, so that the temperature is stabilized. And uh, one more question somebody has asked me on my personal walks, and she has mentioned that our incubators run 24 by 7, 365. Now, in case of these chambers, do we have to shut them off every day in case we are not doing a batch work? Yeah, see, uh, if there are no dishes inside uh, these chambers, uh, there is no point running it. You will unnecessarily consume electricity and stress out your equipment uh, uh, inside uh, things unnecessarily. Uh, the second thing is uh, because it doesn't take, like if you shut down the incubator and you put it on, there might be situation when you have to recalibrate it, right? Which is not the case with these chambers. You shut it on, you sh shut it off, and you come in the morning, shut it on, half an hour, 45 minutes, it comes back to its normal state. There is no calibration, nothing required. You do a calibration check, uh, you know, periodically as per your lab protocols. So even this gadget needs a routine QA, QC, and all the checks similar to that of an ideal incubator, which we have. I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, rate it differently than a laminar flow. I would assume that the checks and the balances that everyone does it for a laminar flow, including the cleaning and other aspect. The same thing you need to do with this particular equipment. There is no difference of this particular equipment from a laminar. Means in means in a nutshell, like, yeah. Means in a nutshell means how we used to get our CO2 incubator calibrated, checked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So even this gadget needs a periodicity of its maintenance and a close-up touches plus and minus for optimal maintenance. And the, yeah. the yeah, and so this can accommodate uh, only CO2 or even mixed gases. As of now, the system that is made, it can only accommodate the CO2, right? Yeah, because even I myself find CO2 is, of course, the main backbone of as far as uh, culture incubation is concerned because of the maintenance of pH. But in the event of you guessing tri gas, the faculty, the, this gadget can allow the leeway of us using multiple gases at the same time. Yes. That, that depends upon the entry ports as such. Correct. Okay, fine. So, so any other uh, punchline or a take-home message which you would like to give us? Of course, the one is Kate is very much an essentiality for any lab to have one, depending upon your workload and the extra, extra what you can sustaining factors are concerned. Yeah. But, but maybe for a big setup or a corporate setup or a professionally huge setup, this gadget needs to be in the laboratory. So with this gadget, you can still accommodate a plain conventional LAF in your lab? Or no, that is just not needed? No, it is required. We, it is needed. It's it a is part and parcel. parcel. It's a part and parcel of it, sir. Because you can't do everything inside. There yeah. are some which you do outside. Fine. So I think, sir, I don't think, I think we have got some questions. Great session. Nice to be involved. Just scroll it down a little bit. I can just check for more questions. You more blocks. All standard equipments can be put in, okay, frequently, temperature fluctuations, which we done. 
how to place how to place small tubes coming from the gynecologist in the case now that's of course you are given a lot of tube slots you one one suggestion is there you can have more blocks or opening that can be customized okay fine sorry your closed chamber fertilization which we discussed is there a special training when you want to be acclimatized to this gadget that's another good question um but maybe i think that shivani should answer yeah um, okay 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 fine well this we did we changing of the water we did does the chamber come with an integrated witnessing system or the witnessing system is retrofitted it's retrofitted it's retrofitted it okay, comes fine. with a normal glass or okay you can even put a uh, a heated uh, uh, plate inside this so this shivani can customize uh, but Uh, the system that you show that we showed you in the in the lab, uh, it is additional fitted with the RI witness system. Yes, sir. That also answers the question okay. Bakar had that will our electronic witness system work with this uh, devices? And yes, it works with this. So you have to get it fitted accordingly. So it works with electronic witness system. Okay, fine. So well, I think there are the lots of tail. The tail is growing longer and longer. As you keep on adding this and this and this and this. But this, I, I, when I was going to the lecture, there was some discussion. I don't remember who was saying, but it was something about the cost and the uh, yes, 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 operation yes. of putting operation. The, you know, see, uh, I mean, even you know, it, when it comes to Indra IVF, uh, you know, each of our centers uh, is a center by itself. It, it doesn't matter that you know we have a conglomerate of of, of centers. That means. we can do things as a, a corporate more properly than compared to this thing uh, yes cost is a factor but see at the end of the day uh, i do understand that uh, india is a very cost sensitive market but you know you are anyway investing a lot of money in the lab and you know i i see these new labs which are being uh, installed these days people are uh, you know taking care of how the Uh, how the uh, they are installing HVAC system in the lab. They are installing. Uh, I have seen some labs which has uh, steel walls, uh, modular setups. Uh, you know, people have been putting money into this thing. So you know, uh, I think the whole mindset has changed now in India, and people are more uh, quality focused. Uh, and you know, compared to the entire uh, you know amount of money that we spend in the lab, uh, you know, be it equipment or be it infrastructure. Uh, i don't think these chambers uh, you know cost too much compared to the entire you know project cost of the lab and the iw setup and you know if it gives an advantage uh, this is something which you should think and you know suggest to the clinicians also fine since we have dr alpesh also with us sir can you deliver a last constructive punch dr alpesh so um, as i had said earlier Uh, one of the main things that i feel very strongly is uh, making sure that your oocytes are well physiologically looked after now in my opinion it is a basic necessity of all the labs to have this catering of the basic need of the human oocyte we talked about the fact that embryos are a bit more resilient they may have repair mechanisms but in the grand scheme of things you know it's not a very expensive tool to invest which is investing in an ivf chamber or 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 a uh, confined environmental chamber i must say that the cost has drastically come down to what it used to be many years ago in uh, in in 1998 we bought our first chamber for around 25000 us dollars so considering you know the cost has come you know quite a lot down and it's become more affordable so i think it's certainly in line with buying a laminar flow cabinet when it comes to the cost and in my opinion you know the take home message is that if you are going to start an ivf laboratory please consider buying at least a basic chamber Yes, you can always optimize into ICSI chambers, etc. ICSI is a process still, which is a you know you you can minimize the number of eggs that you have in your dish to kind of minimize the stress of temperature, etc. But at least for your routine embryology, your egg collection, it would be ideal to have a basic chamber where you can do your basic functionality, your basic embryology. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That was really helpful and very much uh, punch driven to the core. So I think now we don't have any more questions. So of course, a vote of thanks will follow. But just a suggestion to all those who are present till now, after vote of thanks, please connect because we'll be sharing our corporate video. And now the most important duty which I have to perform is to, of course, thank you all. We were introduced today to a topic which inadvertently should be playing a very vital part in shaping the shape of the things to come as far as infertility management is concerned. The entire procedure, the gadgetry, the description, the pros and the cons was explained in a very nice simplified way. Thank you, Dr. Alpesh, Mr. Shitej, Mr. Naval, Mr. Jacob, Dr. Prabhakaran. All this really added spice to the webinar as of today. So on behalf of SSIPL, Shivani Scientific Industries, and from the entire infertility and the embryologist fraternity, I'm indebted to you all for your contribution, for having sparing your valuable time, especially Dr. Alpesh, I think we are pulling out of bed a little early, right? We really thank you very much because this was the first ever live ICSI procedure which was telecast. It was not a recorded video and it was fantastically backed up by clear and crisp audio tips and tricks by none other than Dr. Nitesh himself. I, ex I really am indebted to you all because to spare time on what this topic, which many of us would have brushed off till today, that what is the need? I'm getting my success rates high, my results are good, I need not invest more. But it has really given us a lovely take home message so my wholehearted thanks are also extended to the entire camera team, to the engineers, technicians of Sivani Scientific, to the product manager who literally burnt his fingers hot in making this a grand success. Once again, thank you all. Pleasure, lovely being with you. Take care and be safe. Good day to all of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. A journey of 1000 miles begins with a single step. And that step was first taken in 1971 when the founder late Mr. Chandrakant M. Modi started his first trading company, Ketan and Company, for scientific instruments and laboratory equipment. But before I go down memory lane, let me thank you for being here and watching this video. Hello, I am Ashish Modi, CSO. Chief Success Officer and Medical Inventor at Shivani Scientific, where we enable and support IVF centers and clinic to impart successful assisted reproductive treatment by providing turnkey projects, innovative equipment, services, and timely end-to-end -end solutions. 2021 marks the golden jubilee year of Shivani. Yes, 50 years of leadership and innovation mark by setting up of 1000 plus IVF centers in India and across the globe in 30 plus countries. Let me take you down memory lane and joining us would be a few dear friends and well-wishers who like you have been integral part of this beautiful journey. When I started the IVF program way back in 1985, we used to prepare our own culture medium you very wisely and aptly decided to import the ready-made culture media for IVF. Now this was a great success because it solved a lot of our problems. Now this initial success led to Shivani Scientific in venturing into more and more of IVF products and supply all the equipments required for IVF laboratory including setting up
last 50 years. I started the IVF journey in Nigeria in 2007 and Shivani has played a very big role in the success of our unit. Our first equipment and the training and all that went into it, I don't know what we could have done to have achieved over 2,000 IVF babies over the years. Fifty years experience in laboratory technology, and yeah, for now already active in ART since 1994, so almost 30 years of service to the IVF community. What she wanted to evolve over the years from a local player uh, in the Indian market to a company that is now uh, active globally. I still remember 2003 when I first came to your Dahisar plant, saw your innovation. At that time, you used to make spermifuge, you used to make heating blocks, which nobody made in the country. You don't only support us, you are a part of us. That you want to make a difference and you really want to serve through us the infertile couple. That the only thing which matters is fertility champions and you are a part of the whole team across the country. This journey of co-creating IVF success has been possible because of your support and confidence. So a heartful thank you from myself and entire team at Shivani Scientific. And here is a commitment to innovation, quality products and great service so that we can continue co-creating IVF success with you for years to come.